Cock up, conspiracy or confusion? You're probably in one of those three camps on the Princess of Wales Mother's Day picture with her three children. It was meant to calm the social media rumours about Kate's health and lack of public appearances. It did the opposite. Her way of explaining why a bit of Princess Charlotte's wrist was missing or why Prince Louis's little finger seemed longer than his index finger, she had experimented with picture editing like many other amateur photographers. I mean, that's probably OK for you and I, but when you're married to the future king and you're handing over that image to picture agencies to distribute around the world, the reaction is a little different. With the memes back into overdrive and picture agencies using terms like kill notification, how can the royals shake off their latest PR crisis? This is Sarah Jane Meat with the Sky News Daily. And as well as talking about that with our royal correspondent and a PR expert, we'll go deep into the world of picture editing and picture manipulation to work out exactly what is fact about that picture. Our royal correspondent, Rhiannon Mills, is here. Rhiannon, the princess and the picture. Now, just on one social media platform, this image has been viewed 71 million times. For those that haven't seen it, what's wrong with it? So this was probably one of the most highly anticipated photos because don't forget the last couple of weeks, the conspiracy theories around Kate and her health have been really off the charts. So this was meant to try and ease all of that. And instead, it's just stoked and fanned the flames of a whole new problem for the palace. And ultimately, you look at the picture and what William and Kate were hoping to show us was this nice kind of laid back picture of Kate and the three kids together uh, on Mother's Day. Um, But instead, I think people on social media yesterday, they were kind of being, if you like, armchair detectives. First of all, Charlotte's cuff, the sleeve of her cardigan. They thought that didn't quite look right. We then had them also pointing out that Kate wasn't wearing her wedding rings. Charlotte's skirt apparently looked funny. Her hair looked funny. Um, The zip on Kate's coat. People were looking at Louis's arm. So immediately there were all these different questions. But the real problem came when last night we heard that four of the world's biggest picture agencies were, as they describe it, putting a kill notice onto those pictures. Now, that has never, ever happened with a royal official photograph before. And that has been the big problem for the palace. It's such a rarity for agencies to put a kill notice on a picture. Why did they do it? So first of all, it was AP who kind of put out, it was a really dramatic picture, actually. You had the photograph and then you had this red circle with a line through it, basically saying, kill, we're killing this picture. And ultimately they said it was because they'd looked at it and there appeared to be some kind of manipulation within that photograph. Then very quickly you had AFP, uh, Reuters and Getty Images. They also pulled it. And then this morning, the Press Association, so the big agency here in the UK, they also said that they were taking it down. Now, as a result, we then had this statement from Kensington Palace well, more specifically from Kate herself, which in itself is really, really rare, where the Princess of Wales ultimately said, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion that the family photograph we shared yesterday has caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. A lot of people have said just release the original image, because it's a picture of Kate surrounded by her three children. And as anyone who has tried to take a picture that involves children or animals, it doesn't end up picture perfect. And you might have to take some tweaks if it's going to go out into the world and be there on public record for decades to come. The problem is with the Prince and Princess of Wales, well, we hold them to much higher expectations than that because of their public role. Yes, around the world, they are treated like celebrities. And we know that celebrities will touch and change their their pictures in some way. But William and Kate are part of this hugely important institution for this country. And therefore, we are now calling into question, I think, issues around trust, credibility, at a time when it's difficult for the royal family anyway, isn't it? We've got the king who's unwell with cancer 
and still the monarchy want to kind of portray themselves as this kind of pinnacle of stability and, and continuity. And they basically drop themselves into this, this huge debate about manipulation around photos, fake news, and ultimately made us question whether we can trust them. Rhiannon, you deal with Kensington Palace weekly, daily. You know the team there. How was this photograph allowed to be released to the world with amateur editing, particularly to picture agencies who have very strict rules that the pictures they put out are undoctored? That is fact. Press officers should know that. OK, so I think you've got you've got a couple of things going on here. I think it probably took a lot of convincing and cajoling to make Prince William and the Princess of Wales take this photo in the first instance. They have been so secretive, some would say, about how Kate has been since she had that abdominal surgery. So I think the secrecy around this photo, there was presumably a very tight group of people who knew that this picture was being taken that it was being edited. Obviously, we know that Prince William took the picture. They didn't get another photographer in to do it. Look, we know that Kate is a very keen photographer. The fact that she's the one who says that she did the editing. Again, do we know that that's true or not? We kind of have to take it at face value. But as you say, this is an operation that is used to firefighting. Basically, it's been a really tough few years, hasn't it, in terms of the stories that the royal family have had to deal with. They're not amateurs when it comes to dealing with the world's press and dealing with stories blowing up in this way. So I think there will be some who will say, look, is it really fair that the Princess of Wales ultimately has had to carry the can on this one? In terms of what happens next, I think they're pretty much standing their ground at the moment. There's no sign at the moment that they're going to release that original photograph. All they keep sort of saying to us is, look, this was meant to be a chance for us to to show the world an informal photograph of the family. And yes, minor adjustments were made, but they also won't tell us what those minor adjustments were. So I think it's really rare for them to put out a statement like this. I think they had to. These are exceptional circumstances. Has it completely quietened everything down and sort of shut down the story? I I don't think it has, but I'm not sure that they will bow to the pressure to release that picture, to be honest. Well, that's what they said at the start. They're sticking to it. (laughs) Yeah, No wonder they're not releasing the original image. It'd be a game of spot the difference for people on social media. And it's a big day today uh, for the royal family, Commonwealth Day. Uh, You're heading to Westminster Abbey after we stop chatting. Uh, The royals attending Westminster Abbey to to mark Commonwealth Day. How much is the Princess of Wales missed at events like this? And of course, this is what they want us to be talking about, not a picture. Yeah, because today we're going to be shown the first video message that's been recorded by the King since he was diagnosed with cancer. That's why I expected to be talking about today, because uh, we know that in that message, he is going to pledge to continue to to serve people across the Commonwealth to the best of his ability. And this story about the photograph has just completely overshadowed everything. Is the Princess of Wales missed at events like this? Well, I think you probably just need to ask most of the newspapers who sell copies like No Tomorrow whenever they put her on the front of it. So yeah, I think she is missed. And ultimately, Prince William and, and Kate are probably sort of one of the most high profile royal couples now who are, who are continuing to carry out the royal engagements, of course, since Harry and Meghan stepped away. So she is missed. And I think it's really difficult to sort of comprehend the amount of pressure on her in terms of the clamour to see her again. Look, no matter what you think about this picture being manipulated, we keep being reminded that she has had major abdominal surgery. And so, yeah, it, it's it's a difficult position for her at the moment. She's obviously trying to trying to get better. But I'm not sure that you or I would particularly want to be in this position where you know that people are desperate um, to get photographs of you, especially if you're still feeling a bit under the weather. But ultimately, they have kind of caused this this problem for themselves in terms of manipulating that photograph. Thanks, Rhiannon. So rather than quashing the online conspiracy theories surrounding the Princess of Wales, this photo seems to have actually fanned the flames. The question now, I suppose, is how the royal family are going to manage it. 
Mark Bukowski is the head of Bukowski PR agency and knows something about the sort of pressure the family will now be under. So, Mark, the story so far is we have an apology from the Princess of Wales. And we also have Kensington Palace saying that they will not be releasing the original image that was edited by the princess. Do you think this is going to be the end of it? I don't think it is going to be the end of the situation. I mean, because we've got a bit of a vacuum here that is filled by our good friends and conspiracy theorists that sort of populate the social media world. This is what's made this situation far worse. Uh, the fact that Kate has not been seen since December um, and sooner or later people start asking questions. They probably thought Mother's Day, let's get a nice happy picture of all the family together. And that's what they've issued. The The issue for as will it go away is when um, have we ever lost the trust of the royal family? And he, we've seen this massive disruption since the death of the, of the Queen and the illnesses that seem to be prevalent. Uh, and so to strike a, a blow at the heart of its integrity is in fact a significant moment. Um, you know, at a shave down royal family. Um, there, there isn't the sort of personalities we've become to expect to take up the heavy lifting at this time. There are people that will say, this is a lot of fuss over nothing. Kate will have been like most mothers on Mother's Day, editing pictures of their little ones because they're not all quite looking at the camera. The difference, of course, being the Princess of Wales is sending it to picture agencies. And I just want to read you some reaction we've had from an interview with... AFP news agency, their global news deputy director for photographics, documentation and data. And essentially, he's saying that there was some very strange business going on with this picture. It became obvious it had been altered really badly. It was really amateur. They said that they don't usually apply the strictest checking techniques to trusted sources like Kensington Palace. But this was so obvious it will mean that now, and to quote him, they will put out strong guidelines not to trust the most trusted image sources any more. That's quite a statement to make from a picture agency. They clearly feel that they've been duped. Most people would think, why would you check a picture from Kensington Palace? People might accept the fact that this is a bit of amateur photoshopping of an image. But there's something running at the base of this which is causing the crisis, and that is the fact that the internet have grabbed hold of the fact that this poor woman is recovering from her operation. We haven't seen her for, for three months, and of course this fuels a conspiracy theory. But you don't play with trust. You, do, you don't play with this level of imagery and get it so wrong that creates yet another, you know, hump in the road. I mean, a lot of people are seeing this perhaps as an overreaction, spilling the tea, clutching our pearls. As you said, it's all about trust, all about integrity. When people say to me, what's the most difficult job in the world? I would say working in the press office of the Royal Family. I mean, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. It's not an easy job. It's a professional organisation doing the best they possibly can. But whenever you're dealing with a corporation or individual, the person in charge who's calling the shots, who's employing you, you know, has a view of the media. You have to look at the sort of sensibilities. William has often declared that he wants his private life off guard. He's trying to bring his kids and his wife enjoy a normal life. Well, that's sort of very difficult when you're the future monarch of the realm. There's a myriad of things that actually go in to a PR crisis and some of them are very slight and undetected but they just become something of a sort of hamster wheel driving things forward. Thanks Mark. Well we're going to take a quick pause here but after the break what has our data and forensic team uncovered from the photos metadata? Don't go anywhere. We're back. Well, we've spoken a lot about the fallout from this royal family photo, but what of the photo itself? Adam Parker is part of Sky's data and forensics unit. Adam, like so many news outlets, all these picture agencies, this image of the Princess of Wales and her three children comes into Sky News. And on face value, it looks like a lovely family picture, but it came under close scrutiny and a few eyebrows were raised. Talk me through it. It all kind of started with a little bit of online rumours and people looking at the photo and going, something looks not quite right about Charlotte's left wrist. And looking at it closely, a Photoshop expert say it's kind of a bad blend, which is a Photoshop term for when you're trying to blend 
two things together and it's kind of not quite come out right from face value and further back you can't really see that but when you zoom in you can see more and photos like this are taken on big cameras and you are able to zoom in far enough to be able to see something that mm. doesn't look quite right. And this sparked an investigation. When a photo is sent in its original form to a platform like Sky News, it comes with it a lot of information and that's called metadata. So you opened it. What did you find? Metadata, it's a huge amount of text. It's actually trying to interpret that and work out what you can tell. Um, we found out that on Friday evening and on Saturday morning, this image had been opened and saved on Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is a image editing tool. You can do things like touching up photos. You can do moving about things in photos. So it's a really broad tool. But we were able to see using the metadata, which is linked to the original image, that it had been altered a couple of times. There is additional stuff in that metadata too. We could see what lens was used. We can see the camera model that was also used. We also know it was a Mac computer running a very specific type of Photoshop. So the detail we can get at times is really incredible. Sometimes when we see images on social media, most of the time, they are stripped of that metadata. So looking at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you don't actually get that information. But by getting the original picture, we can actually strip all of that out and get all of that info. So Adam, that's what the metadata can tell us. But what doesn't it tell us? Because that can be just as important in this discussion. The major thing with this photo is the when. We don't know when that photo was taken. Sometimes photos have metadata where there is that information. The other thing that isn't in the metadata is location. But our data and forensics team using various imagery managed to work out mm. exactly where it was. That's a question we know about. The when is the big one. I went down a rabbit hole with these conspiracy theories last night online when the news came out that the picture had been killed and, you know, people were talking about the tree in the background. It's the wrong time of year for the for the tree to, to have leaves like that. So it, it all feeds into that. There's a trend on social media now where you have hashtag no filter. You know, people have to say, this is a real picture. I haven't touched it. I think majority of the images, if it's come to marketing or communication that we see, are edited in some way. We expect that, though, don't we? Do we do expect that. We expect photos to be brightened up. We expect them to be... Polished. Uh, ...touched up, mm. yeah. But the actual altering of an image, which can be done by amateurs, it can be done by our phones. I mean, an iPhone now, you can highlight your dog and you can pull your dog out of the image and put it on a white background or put it elsewhere. Mm. So the technology changes are allowing normal people to be able to make changes to photos. I looked at a photo from Downing Street, the last image that was uploaded to their Flickr account. Was it put through an imaging software? Yes. Was it altered? As far as I can tell, no. So that altering of images is, is where the line has been crossed. But yes, we are used to seeing edited images this has just gone possibly that step too far. We know that the Princess of Wales is a keen amateur photographer and likes to take the pictures herself. Does it throw all her other images that she's released into question? We have actually been trying to look through other photos that they've advertised as taken by William or mm -hmm. Kate and to see if they have put them through similar bits of uh, software. We haven't quite got to the point at which we can say every single image is, is changed. But again, we don't know the changes. In this kind of world of AI, we're looking at imagery online and what do we trust? What do we not trust? What tools can we use? And actually what's happened here is quite basic. It's hmm. Photoshop, which is commercially available. With the rise of AI, particularly in an election year, so many elections happening across the globe. There's a war in Europe. There's a war in the Middle East. And the images, video, photographs, we have to be sure that what we are seeing, what we are putting out there to the world is true, hasn't been altered for someone else's gain or for whatever reason. At Sky News, we use a handful of different tools to detect AI images. And that might be a face that's changed or that might be a face that's saying words that might not be. And these are examples that we've seen. Building trust in that audience and being able to show them this bit of content is verified by Sky News. And a lot of our work when it comes to war zones involves that. And it might be that we're trying to work out location, we're looking at weather conditions, we're looking at all of those things to check it's legitimate. This kind of caught us a little bit 
off guard because we wouldn't expect altered images to be released mm. by the royal family. AI and technology is advancing at such a rapid pace. Have we got the tools to keep up? Detecting these things as it's becoming easier and as it's becoming more accessible for people on phones, that's the risk. Ultimately here, though, it's all about motive. So when technology and motivation are both there, which we're getting close to that point, that's when the riskiest time is. We have various uh, tools and uh, experts that we speak to that are attempting to fight off deep fakes. Mm. But there's bound to be something new that comes out and there's bound to be new technology that opens up a new window for people who do want to manipulate media and do want to release content that isn't legitimate. You touched on the fact that when an image like this goes up on social media, it's stripped of all that metadata. It's just the image. You have to take it at face value. But it actually varies from social media platform to social media platform. The main social media platforms that we talk about, your Facebook, Twitter, your Instagram, your TikTok, all of that metadata is stripped. Um, there are some exceptions. A lot of the photo sharing websites like Flickr, um, you might upload something to... Google Photos and Google Drive, sometimes that data is kept. It varies by device, it varies by website, but Flickr is one that you do get all of that metadata. So advice for people is to be careful where you are uploading things. And it's a bit of a battle then between privacy and trust. Just as you said, you know, this technology is available for everyone on their phones to be able to alter images. It's an important reminder that so are the tools to find out more about the images if you are sent something. You can put any image into Google Lens and it's available on a Google search. You can upload your own images too and it will search that image on the internet. It's looking for different colours in the image and then it's looking across the internet for that photo. So if you want to see if a photo is old and it's been online for three years and been used in a different conflict perhaps, you can use a tool like that. Uh, geolocation is a big Thing that we do too. It's really important to know where that photo was taken and who that photo was taken by. So we use a handful of different tools to be able to source those photos, to verify them. And actually a lot of these are, as you say, publicly available. Open source is what we call them. Anybody can use them. Search their own image, search another image and just to check how authentic it is. Adam, fascinating. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's all from me for today. Neil will be back tomorrow.